Hello, biology students. We are in our new topic, genetics, and our first set of notes is all about genetic vocab. We're going to start by really understanding what hereditary, hereditary means. Um, heredity is the passing of traits, which are attributes from parent to offspring. So, for instance, these two parents, they pass on their eye color trait, their hair color trait, which might seem weird given that this little boy has such different looking hair at this point. They pass on their height, etc. All of that is heredity. All right. Um, so in class, we're going to learn about an example of hand clasping, but this is another example that might be a good representation of a trait that would be passed on from parent to offspring. We're going to learn lots of other ones as well. But really, genetics is the study of this, how we pass on traits. Before we jump into genetics too far, we have to really give credit to the founder of genetics, which is this guy here shown pictured in many different ways. And you do need to remember his name and what he did. His name is Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel is considered the father of genetics. He predicted how traits are passed on from one generation to the next. He used pea plants to do this. He only studied one trait at a time, so sometimes he looked at the height of pea plants. When he was looking at height, he wasn't also looking at the flower color. If he looked at flower color, he did that in a second different experiment. So his experiments were very controlled, looking at only one trait at a time as they passed on those traits from parent plant to offspring plant. Now we'll move into genetic traits in more detail. And this is one of our hardest words of the day. It is the word allele. Not Adele, not allele, allele. Try saying it, allele. This is different forms of a gene, usually represented by letters. So for instance, for plants, we just talked about how plants can be tall or short. Those are two different versions of the height trait. All right, different forms of a gene. And we're gonna represent them with letters. So for humans, another example could be hair color in humans. We have lots of different versions of the trait hair color, which would be in a gene. So we have black, brown, blonde, all of those different versions, which we could represent with letters, are all alleles. So allele is like different versions or different forms of a gene. Now, when we think about our alleles, we usually have two different categories or types. Some alleles are the dominant version. Dominant alleles are always visible or expressed. So, for instance, we're going to use letters to represent these different types of alleles. We're going to pick a capital letter that seems very dominating to represent dominant. So, for instance, I might pick a big letter A or a big letter G to represent dominant. So for this guinea pig, this guinea pig, which is black, which is a version of fur color, and you should draw this as an example. Let's say we're going to pick big B to represent black, um, and we would that's how we would write it. So our version of this guinea pig's color is big B for black fur. All right, let's do our next one. The opposite of dominant is recessive. This is a version of a trait or an allele that is hidden. Sometimes it's masked by a dominant allele. So we're going to represent a lowercase letter for this, a little a or a little g, it could be a little b. So some guinea pigs are white or light colored. So instead of picking w, last time we picked b, so we're going to stick with b. We're going to use little b to represent white fur, little b. All right, that's recessive. All right, it's hidden usually some of the time, or it can be hidden, but lowercase letter for recessive. So we know that we as humans are diploid, so we actually have two copies of each trait, uh, one from our mom and one from our dad. And so that makes allele combinations. Our first combination of alleles is called homozygous. Homo prefix means same, two identical versions. So I like to call this pure or purebred. We have two examples here. 
we have homozygous dominant, big A, big A, or homozygous recessive, little a, little a. Both have the same letter in the same form, uppercase, uppercase, lowercase, lowercase. If I had one that was one uppercase, one lowercase, that's not called homozygous. Homozygous means same version, okay? So, for instance, for our guinea pigs, I could have a black fur guinea pig. It would be big B, big B, because black fur was dominant. And for white fur guinea pig, I'd have little B, little B, white fur. All right, those are homozygous. They have the same letter in the same form twice, uppercase, uppercase, lowercase, lowercase. Wonderful job. Now the opposite of homozygous is heterozygous. This is where I have two different alleles for the trait. We can call this a hybrid or carrier. This is the form when I have one uppercase letter and one lowercase letter, or one that's dominant and one that's recessive. So we said that dominant things are always visible. So which letter is going to overshadow the other one? The uppercase letter. So in my guinea pig example, I'm going to have a big B, little b. What's my guinea pig going to look like? Is it going to look black or is it going to look white? It's going to look black because that little b, the white fur, is hidden or masked. So yes, that DNA is hiding in there, but we can't see the white fur. It's just genetics, okay? We call this heterozygous, different alleles for a trait. So if you see black fur, can you be 100% sure of what its genes or alleles are? So we had two different examples with black fur. I can be black fur and I could be what? Well, I could be big B, big B, or I could be big B, little b. I could be homozygous or I could be heterozygous. So to distinguish between this, we have two last words, comparing the genetics and comparing the physical appearance. The physical appearance we're going to call the phenotype. Pheno sounds like physical, pheno, physical appearance. We represent this by word descriptions, such as this person for eye color has blue eyes. That's the physical appearance. Okay, for our guinea pig example, the physical appearance of this guinea pig versus this guinea pig is black versus white. That's phenotype. Now, what do you think we'd use to describe the genetics? Not phenotype, but genotype. These are the actual alleles or the actual genes. We represent genotype by letters. So here, my black fur guinea pig, remember, could be big B, big B, or it could be big B, little b. Homozygous or heterozygous. Because both of these have at least one big B, or dominant, and that will overshadow any recessive version. Now, am I going to have two options for my white guinea pig? No, I'm sure not. I can only have one option, little b, little b, because as long as there's a big b, it would look different. So the only way I can be recessive is to have two homozygous recessive alleles. Wonderful job. This is a lot of terms. We're going to practice them in class. See you then.